On today's episode, as electric vehicle technology matures, it's looking more and more like the internal combustion engine technology. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. The internal combustion engine is dead. Now, I can't tell you the number of times I've heard this from hardcore electric vehicle enthusiasts who repeat it like a mantra. Climate change notwithstanding, I think that these predictions are a little premature. It took 50 years for the last horses to leave American city streets after the automobile was invented, and I estimate that it'll take about 30 before EVs push the last piston-powered vehicle into a museum. But what if I'm wrong? What will engineers with years of experience in powertrain development do with their careers? Well, a recent press release crossed my desk that suggests what many engineers already know, that the laws of physics are inescapable and relentless, and they apply to all machines, regardless of the power source. Take automotive cooling systems, for example. Now, thermal management in combustion engines is an industry in itself, and successful careers have been built around everything from impeller design to gasket material development. But the radiator, water pump, thermostat, and hoses seen in combustion engines for a century, they're simply not needed with electric motors. Or are they? Seeing Mobility, a manufacturer of electric vehicle battery packs, and petroleum industry stalwart Castrol have announced a line of what the firm calls thermal management fluid to support Zing's immersion battery technology. Why a special fluid? Well, it turns out that electric vehicle battery packs get hot, and that has serious performance and safety implications if that heat isn't rejected to ambient. And it's a fundamental of engineering that you can move heat by conduction, convection, radiation, or some mixture of the three, but you can't wish it away. Now, as it turns out, the current state of the art is to circulate a working fluid through the battery pack using a pump and header tank, then flow it through a radiator where the fluid rejects the heat to ambient. Sound familiar? And like automotive engine coolants, the new thermal management fluid is a highly engineered product that not only transports heat, but carries an additive package for corrosion and inhibition and long drain intervals. So if you're an engineer working with coolant pumps, hoses, fittings, heat exchangers, sealing materials, thermal efficiency, testing, what you're doing right now will translate perfectly into the electric vehicle space. And if you think that your future electric vehicle will eliminate the cost of flushing that deck school out of your old Chevy, think again. But don't call it coolant or antifreeze. It's thermal management fluid. It'll serve the same function, but I expect with a name like that, it should sell at your local auto zone for 10 or 15 bucks more per gallon. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series, visit Engineering TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.